Hey beautiful people, today I have my June palettes of the month. I'm gonna try to do a ranking today. Let me know if you guys prefer a ranking or just me talking about each palette like I have been. But as always, this is inspired by Alicia Budget Beauty. I will have her channel down below. She's the first creator that I saw do this and so that's where I got the idea to do these from. Um, every month I had been like every single time I did, did my makeup I would use my decision wheel but now doing this it kind of just helps me and inspires me even more to do more looks and to use them and to also share you with you guys my thoughts it also helps me to declutter as I use products and see kind of if I like them or not and so let's go ahead and jump in. First off, I want to say I didn't use the Glam Light Scooby Doo Roro palette again this month. So this one will be going into July. And the first look I'm doing is going to be with this one because I keep leaving it off. So I will be picking nine other palettes at the end of the video uh, to join that one. But let's go ahead and get into the ranking. And first off, the one in last place is this one right here, the De Natasha Denona Circle Loco Palette. I've done looks that I've really enjoyed with this, but this time around, it just looked very muddy. I'm gonna see if I can put up a picture. I actually did a get ready with me that you guys will see. Um, in the end, it was like okay, but overall, I didn't like the way it looked. It didn't blend as seamlessly. It's also partially my fault because I try to pair certain colors that did muddy up, like for example, this orange and this teal. But I do love Natasha Denona's formula. Just sadly, um, the look just did not come together as much as I wanted it to. I actually want to give this a second chance and go ahead and put it into next month's pile as well just because I was very let down with the look that I got this month from that. Next up on the list is the Artist Couture Ethereal Bloom. This one, I felt like I really had to go in there and really wet the eyeshadow, add a tacky base to it to make it look very bright, bright and vibrant. Overall, this is just an okay palette. I kind of just feel like uh, the shimmers are very um, subdued. They're not as like very pigmented and you really have to work to get them to become pigmented. And I'm gonna go through my collection and if I have these in a better formula, this one will be decluttered. I'm gonna say goodbye to it. The packaging is super cute, it's tiny, but I just feel like it's not as great as it could be. So um, if, if I have some other pastels and a better formula, I think I'm going to declutter or maybe even buy a pastel-y colored one. I know that Blend Bunny's formula is absolutely amazing and she has a pastel one. So I might pick that one up and get, and I'm almost sure that I'm going to be decluttering that one. And I know that that one's above the Circle palette, but that's only because the look that I combined didn't work out. <laughs> Not because the Natasha Denona formula isn't that great. The next palette on the ranking above the, um, what's it called? The Ethereal Bloom is the Wander Wondrous Sea Escape. This one's a little bit lower just because it's a tinier palette. It's very limited what you can do in here, but the shades in here are absolutely stunning. You literally only have one matte. The shivers in here perform very, very beautifully. You do want to apply with your finger, but they're very, very stunning. I love the Wander Beauty Shimmer Formula. It's very beautiful, and the mattes are very build buildable. They're more of the softer kind of buildable, so it takes a little bit more if you want more pigmentation, but they're absolutely beautiful. Next up, the other ones that I have here were so hard to kind of put in to a line, but I went ahead and just did it because it's a ranking video and I feel like that's one of the reasons I hardly do rankings is because I'm so undecided that Libra in me wants everybody to have a fair chance. <laughs> but next up we have the Hip Dot Zion. This one I was giving a second chance to and I love the look that I came up with this month. I will like 
have the picture here. I feel like I did a really pinky purple look and that is just my vibe. These worked very, very beautiful. I was able to combine so many of the shades and this time around, I really feel like it performed the way I wanted it to. I feel like maybe I wasn't doing enough effort the first time, but I am going to keep this in my collection and I really, really enjoyed the look. Next we have the Natasha Denona Gold Palette. This one ranks a little bit lower just because it's more of a basic neutral palette, uh, but I do love Natasha Denona's formula. This one was like an OG staple that everybody and their mother wanted. This one in Sunset. I know that she just came out with a new palette and I feel like it's very similar to this one. Uh, but this one is uh, down on the list just because I feel like there's not much of a variety in here. You could basically do neutral or gold. <laughs> And that's it. Um, you do have two teals in here and then this iridescent kind of gold, um, but there's not much of a variety, so that's why it's a little lower on my ranking, but I absolutely do love her formula and I do like the gold look that I got from it. It's just, there's not much variety in there, so you know, it kind of is what it is. So after the gold palette, for the same reason, we have the Tati Beauty Volume 1. This is pretty old. I probably should get rid of it, but I haven't because I'm waiting for her to do a miracle and bring this back. This is absolutely stunning. The only reason it's lower on my list is because it's very limited, kind of like the gold palette on the kind of um, things that you can do. The shades are very basic and we have a lot of repetitive shades because basically you have the same shade in different formulas. It is very gorgeous on and I do love the formulas in here so I do hope that she one day will bring this back. If she does, it is something that I would purchase but I still use this. I haven't had any kind of issues as far as like any reactions. If I was to have a reaction from it, I would get rid of it because um, obviously it's not supposed to be used for this long, especially the glitters, but um, I haven't had any reaction from it and I do still love the formula and it still performs really nicely, so that's why that one is there. Next we have the Lunar Beauty Eternal Eclipse. The packaging is absolutely stunning and this is kind of like the formula that I really enjoy from Lunar Beauty. Uh, I don't really like the Moon Spell 2. I'm not sure if there was a different lab. I've actually considered decluttering that one. I have kept it basically for the packaging and that's not a good reason to keep it. But this one performs really, really beautifully. The mattes blend like a dream. The shimmers apply gorgeous on the lid. I really like the brown smoky look that I got from this. So very, very beautiful. And then we have some teals down here, but it's basically a neutral palette, but more on the smoky side. Now we are down to the top two. This was super hard. They were like neck and neck fighting each other for the win. In second place, we have the Secret Garden. This is by Be Bella Beauty Bar. This is the palette that my friend Jose sent me, and this is absolutely stunning. I have fallen in love with their formula. Their shimmers are something that you need a, not a synthetic, a natural hairbrush or your finger to apply. They're more on the chunkier side, but this palette is stunning. The shades in here are absolutely beautiful. They, it does really look like a garden. We just have gorgeous, gorgeous shades in here. So I have fallen in love with the formula. The mattes blend seamlessly. Just really, really great formula, beautiful. I don't know if they pop out. I wanna say that they do because they kind of have like that little space there to lift them up. Uh, but this is absolutely just beautiful. I even like the packaging where we have the secret garden in the front. It's very simple but beautiful. And I do like, I did this time around. The first time I used it last month, I did more of a neutral look with it with like a... Um, with this duochrome, co duochrome color. But this time around, I used a lot of the greens. And I used like probably like two or three of these greens and did that on my lid and they looked beautiful with the shimmer on top. Very, very great formula. It is a little bit pricey, but 
amazing. I hope they have a sale or something because I would pick up another palette in a heartbeat. And the number one on my ranking is Miss Huda Beauty. This is the Mercury Retrograde. This is such a beautiful pastel shades. Just absolutely beautiful. Oh, it's just it's just gorgeous. You know what? Now that I'm looking at it, this kind of resembles the Artist Couture. So I will be decluttering this from my collection because I do have quite a bit of pastels in this Huda Beauty and I do feel like these perform better. We have more pigmentation in here. The shimmers in here are just absolutely amazing. I love a lot of the palettes that are made in Italy and her bigger palettes are made in Italy and the quality is absolutely amazing. The pigmentation of these is just, I don't know, they're just out of this world, just very, very beautiful i absolutely just love these shimmers from here it's just it's just really really great so i really love her bigger palettes and this one i loved the look that i did i did like purples with um pastels and it turned out really beautiful so this one was number one on my ranking it felt kind of weird to rank these, but let me know if you guys like this style of video. Now I'm gonna use my Decision Wheel app and go ahead and select the ones for next month. Next we have all the palettes from my Decision Wheel. Let's get into it. First off, we have my MAC Single Shadows. I absolutely loved MAC for the longest time. I still love MAC. Just not as hardcore, hardcore fan as I used to be. But these are my singles from them. Over the years, I have decluttered quite a bit of them. But these are more newer, and so these are still in my collection. Uh, I will be testing these out, do a few looks, and see how they perform. Next, we have the, I don't want to say the name, but this is from Jeffree Star. I don't really care for the packaging. It's, um... I don't know it just it's just not uh, it, I just this I don't know let me know your thoughts on it but it's not my cup of tea I wish that he had named this something else and another thing is that I wish he wasn't on the packaging I actually want to do like old school like when we were in school and would um we call them forrar like where you would cover something up so this is something that I would definitely cover up because I don't really care for the name but I do love the neutrals in here this is absolutely beautiful I wish that he had called this like the nude or something like that and kept it very simple without all of that um also the names on here are very out of <laughs> you know just very um sexual I got this from my friend Jose who had a duplicate when he bought one of those like mystery boxes and I'm super grateful because this is absolutely beautiful. Like the way these perform, like the matte formula in here is just beautiful. And this is literally like every single neutral matte that you would need to do a look. It's just the name. The name kills me. I, I definitely want to just, I don't know, maybe I'll take a piece, piece of cloth or some paper and wrap it and just take this whole thing off. But that was one of the palettes next we have the ColourPop dream street with Cal kathleen lights i remember getting this it's probably super old we'll see how this performs but um if it doesn't perform well this is definitely something that i would declutter it is cute but it's basically neutral with some pops of teals in there and i do have newer formulas with that then we have the huda beauty empowered palette and this is a really fun kind of like twist on golds and i like the fact that she has a lot of like orangey tones in there and then some different textures but we'll see because i um if i don't if i remember well i think like some of these textures i have to be a little bit more careful with because they do um kind of can look a little crepey on my lid and make me look a little older so i'll see how that performs next we have the melt vida this palette the aesthetic of it is just absolutely gorgeous i actually have the muerte palette as well and this one's always such a fun palette we have really bright shades of yellow green oranges and i think yeah there's only like two or three shimmers in here but melts mattes perform 
just flawlessly. Then we have my only other hip dot palette, which is the Cenote. This one is like a green blue theme. Not looking at it, it looks more blue than green, but we will play around with this and see. I feel like out of the two, I use more the Zion than the Cenote just because I don't gravitate as much to using so many blues. <clears throat> Then we have the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Volume 2. This is a very beautiful, just very neutral palette. This is gorgeous for taking on vacation, which I have done quite a bit. You can do like a smoky brown eye, a smoky eye, or just a neutral look. And these Tarte palettes, I don't know where they're made in. Yeah, these are made in Italy, and these little ones right here perform just so good. And you can tell that the quality is very... Um, up there compared to like their holiday palettes just very beautiful and even the packaging on here I really love then we have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Carly Bible palette I have always watched Carly she doesn't uh, upload as frequently as back in the day but this palette when it launched was my jam it still is we have a gorgeous like duochrome purple even the shimmer in here is absolutely beautiful. This OA color has so many glitters in it and looks stunning on the eye. I haven't played with this in a hot minute, so we'll see how the quality is because it is an older palette. Then we have Pat McGrath. This is one of the motherships, and this is Mothership 5. And of course we have the four special shades up here that are stunning and then basically a neutral. I feel like Pat McGrath fell into that, you know, like neutral with a few shades kind of palette theme. And it's really sad because these right here are everything. These, uh, these four shades are just stunner. Then we have the Vise Art Dark Matte. And this is basically an all matte with some, like we have the pink and the blue and basically a lot of dark matte shades. And then last we have the Scooby Doo, which is going to be the first one that I use because this keeps like, I don't know, I keep forgetting about it and forgetting to use it. So I will go ahead and like jump on it. And those will be the palettes that I will be trying for next month. Thank you guys so much for watching, for supporting my channel. I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, you can subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.